Uh, Rembrandt, the, this self-portrait is in some ways similar to the Mona Lisa, Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, in the way that the lighting is kind of similar. It's lit from up above. It's a um, bit of three-quarters lighting. You have a cast shadow on the face. and um, What Rembrandt's doing now is he's knocking it up so many more degrees. He's knocking the light up. He's taking it further and further and he's um, making the highlights brighter and the form stronger and that's something that's it's almost uncontrollable. It's like kind of con controlling fire and Rembrandt had an eye for how to to really zero in on the spotlight effect and the hierarchy of light and to bring it out. But some of the interesting consequences is to achieve that kind of lighting ability. It's not a question of just putting light on the figure. You have to start mastering the forms. Uh, and uh, for example, in Rembrandt's portraits, the face has become more like uh, a landscape where every millimeter of the real face ends up feeling a little bit like a mile in a landscape. So he's extending, so the, like the ears go back further in space, and the forehead and the nose come out much, much closer to us in space. And so he's extending the landscape of the face and creating more depth. And one of the interesting consequences with the uh, Rembrandt is what he's known for is his psychological depth of the human expression. But he's also creating a greater, bigger form of the face than any other artist has ever done. So like, for example, when you're in a museum with Rembrandts, and if you have the opportunity, like at the Metropolitan, you can sometimes do this, where they've got a Rembrandt on the opposite wall, but then they have the doorway going into the other gallery. And you can go walk into the other gallery and still see the Rembrandt on that distant wall. Then sometimes they have like two galleries. So they have actually three. So the Rembrandt's at the farthest end and you can be hundreds of feet away. And the Rembrandt image looks more real than all the people walking around because he's crystallized the form so dramatically. And the further back you go, you just see the form of that face and the expression. People are walking around, they look like ghosts. Their nose is a little flat, their ears are sitting out in front of their face. And he's really mastered this element of form and depth. And then the lighting is what we get to see as a result. Rembrandt extended the space, uh, the form of the face by creating a tremendous amount of depth. And if you think about it not as a form of a face with, you know, about a foot of distance between the nose and the back of the head, if you think about it as being a landscape with, with 30 or 40 miles, maybe 80 miles of depth with the mountains way off in the distance, Rembrandt would set back like the earlobe and it'd be way back in space and then the tip of the nose would be shooting out towards us in space. And so he looks at the, the face as a kind of a landscape of depth with hills and valleys and mountain peaks. And, and he really extends and pushes out the, um, the face to resemble a landscape. 